So what you were just hearing was a combination of two elements, and one of those was a brand new instrument that Native Instruments just released, which is the Jacob Collier Audience Choir. And another one is a favorite sort of effect or program of mine called Paul Stretch. Now the Audience Choir is something really cool. It just came out, and it's a bunch of recordings that were done during Jacob Collier's Jesse tour in 2022, I think. And it's the audience singing certain notes that he was then conducting, and they would make certain noises, and they would change vowel sounds and do all this really cool stuff. And now what you're able to do sitting at home is play that same collection of audiences as an instrument. It's a really powerful and very cool thing. And when I first heard this earlier today, there's so much character and nuance that comes out of an audience that has just assembled to see a musical event and then ends up becoming a part of it. And so there is variance and excitement and all kinds of really cool stuff happening in there. And my mind went, what happens if you take that and stretch it out so all those little bits of information that are in the voice start to become part of the instrument itself at a rate that the human ear and the brain can sort of absorb and do something with? So that's exactly what I've done here. And what I will do is take you through that workflow really quickly and show you how that happens. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is just jump right in here and record a little bit of the audience choir. We're doing this with no effects or anything right now. And there's a reason for that because that's gonna kind of get layered in a little bit later. And that gives us about 10 to 15 seconds of audio. And what I'm gonna go ahead and do is use another feature of this instrument. And so you can change the vowel sounds that the audience is making and do that with kind of this XY pad in real time. And I'm gonna record that as part of an automation lane. So we will start here with the ums. And that now is going to become part of that playback. And so if I just set this back to read and we play back. Now you can hear that movement is starting to layer in here. There's some very cool stuff in this instrument in these upper sections, and I'm not going to spoil the surprise for you. You should get the instrument and, and kind of play with this yourself. Uh, but there's some incredible power that's buried in here. It's really amazing. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is export this, and we'll set ourselves a little export area, and we'll save this as a file so we can bring this over to Paul Stretch, and we will pull Paul Stretch up. All right, so now we're in Paul Stretch, and I'm going to go ahead and grab that file really quickly. And here we are, and we're just going to listen back to that very quickly. I have no, no processing or effects on, so this should sound exactly as it did. Yep, that's great. So what I'm going to do is just start, uh, let's just start back at the beginning here. And let's go ahead and stretch this by 16, 17 times and see what that sounds like. size the uh, fast Fourier I think up a little bit bigger we're gonna change the stretch to 8.3 we're gonna add a little bit more no noise into it and then we're gonna filter it about 330 Hertz 340 Hertz And so it becomes kind of this airy, almost instrument and effect in and of itself. And it's, it becomes like a pad and a wash and a soundscape all at once. And there's so much depth to this program that you can go in here and manipulate. 
And so my intent here is to create something that I'm going to bring back into Logic and then play against it. So I want to find something that feels nice and musical to me. I'm going to bring a little bit more of that low end back in. Open up the top. That's starting to feel really cool. That feels like a nice sweet spot to me. So what I'll go ahead and do is just output, output this as its own render. Make sure we're saving to the right. Let's do JXP stretched two, because this is the second time I'm trying this. And set that at 24. And now we have about three minutes and 15 seconds of audio out of that first 10 to 15 seconds of performance from the beginning. And that to me is just incredibly lush. So with something that's three minutes and 15 seconds long, I could turn this into sort of a moodscape track right away. So find points of interest and set markers to them, play a piano against it, add some strings in, a little percussion, some environmental noise, and you can just use this as a bed for something that becomes sort of movement-based and emotional and has all of that texture from the choir in it. So as an example, what I will go ahead and do in this space is we're going to play this back and there's a piano I was working with earlier that we're going to turn on. And I'm also going to add a little bit of Valhalla Supermassive, which is one of my just absolute most favorite reverb. Uh, it's uh, even more powerful to reverb. It's, it's something else. Um, so we're going to add a little bit of that. I'm also going to layer in just a little bit of EQ, um, bring the high end down just a little bit because that was kind of a bit intense earlier. And so this is what that sounds like with Valhalla and EQ on it. And I'm just gonna go ahead and play a little piano. So with a little dialing in and a little bit of finesse, you can come up with something that is really evocative, very movement-based, and then still has all of that spirit and soul of everybody that was a part of the audience choir when it was recorded. And the instrument and the power of that instrument is such that you can play it as an audience choir, and it sounds amazing. And again, so many tricks that are buried in there. But within each one of those voices and within the quality of the recording, there's a lot to explore. And this is just barely touching the surface of what you can do in a program like Paul Stretch, where you can take that and you can blow that out by a hundred times and end up with just one piece of choir, just like one or two seconds of choir becoming a song of itself. So play with it. It's free right now. I hope you have fun with it. I certainly am. And I'm probably going to be up all night just messing with it. So thanks for checking this out with me.